ain't my bride. Let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of a speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. Okay, imagine this scene. It's the year 1769 and you are casually walking down a cobblestone street in Paris, France. I mean, King Louis XVI is on the throne of the country and in fact he's still a bachelor. He won't marry Marie Antoinette for another year. Men with tricorn hats and women with hairstyles that would make the B-52s jealous, you know, are strolling about the streets, going about their business. When, in the distance, you hear a hissing, a weird hissing sound, and then there's pillars of smoke coming in the direction. And then, from around the corner, a great beast appears. A lumbering dinosaur of wood and bronze slowly pulls its ponderous bulk along the road, with a man on top of it desperately trying to keep control of the thing. I mean, horses freak out, people freak out, I mean, they're screaming, eh, that's the dragon from hell? Is that what that is? Is, is this the end of the world? Well, no, it, neither was the case. What it actually was, was the world's first vehicle, motor vehicle, built capable of carrying a passenger ever produced on the planet. And the man who was atop of this thing, trying to keep control of it, was none other than the world's first motorist, Nicholas Joseph Cugno. And he really should be known for more than that. Born in 1725, Cugno was, by the 1760s, an officer in the French Army, specifically an artillery captain. But he was also an engineer of extraordinary vision. Keep in mind that at this time in history, the first steam engine, the Newcomen engine of 1712, had been around for some 50 years. These mammoth beasts were used for pumping water as they were simply too inefficient and unwieldy for much other use. Now it is true that James Watt did figure out how to rework them so that they would be more useful, but he did not do this until almost 10 years after Cugno built his masterpiece. I'll admit, I wonder if Watt looked over Cugno's shoulder at some time, you know, kind of like Portia and Ledwinka, but I digress. Cugno thought that a steam engine could be made into a vehicle that could be used on the battlefield, a gun tractor to haul heavy artillery into position. In the pre-Napoleonic era, this idea is both a reasonable one and absurd. It was true that a you know, heavy artillery cannon could take several teams of horses to haul into position and that this was very vulnerable for all involved. If a horse in the teams gets wounded or killed, the weapon could not make it into position and the enemy will probably wipe out all the horses and then some before it all gets sorted out. A purely mechanical means to accomplish the goal is immune to the effects of small arms fire in theory and may be able to move bigger guns quicker. It's the absurd part of Cugno's idea that we need to look at now. The only kind of steam engine in the whole of France are Newcomen atmospheric engines. That's it. James Watt wouldn't even do his thing for another 10 years. A steam engine weighs 20 or so tons and can reliably pump water from a mine as long as it has a massive flywheel to keep momentum and lots of water handy. Mounting engine requirements like that into some sort of mobile chassis is kind of like putting a V8 engine onto a roller skate. Yeah, except the V8 engine would actually have enough power to move the skate. Good luck getting the Newcomen engine to get enough energy to get a flywheel moving if it's on the ground or a roller skate or anything. To put it bluntly, at that time no steam engine on the planet had the ability to turn a wheel 
that was on the ground to pull a vehicle that was unfortunately attached to said wheel. So if our buddy Nick was going to make a big hunk and gun tractor, he'd have to reinvent the steam engine. And that's what he did. Instead of one big cylinder, he made two small ones. However, instead of the atmospheric principle in which the power stroke is caused by a vacuum through condensing steam, Cugno used the pressure of the steam to push the piston in the cylinder. This was nothing else than revolutionary. By doing this, he could generate far more power than he could otherwise, as long as the metalwork of the engine holds up. This was a big limiting factor since there were no big iron works at the time. It would have to be built of brass and bronze, so it wasn't going to be huge pressure, no more than 50 pounds or so. But hey, that's a darn sight better than the few pounds that these Newcomen engines do. So Cunha was ready to build, right? Uh, nope. <laughs> Keep in mind, a steam engine had never been used to drive a vehicle before. And even the term horsepower didn't exist yet. Steam engines, without exception, had only been used to get massive, heavy flywheels moving so that pumps could be run off of the kinetic energy they developed. Well, you need explosive energy to get a wheel turning under load when it's on the ground. How can you both create and control explosive energy with a steam engine? So what he did was turn to an older technology, the clock. Inside a clock are many various gears, springs, and cogs, all working from a single power source. If a spring can move a lever that pushes a cog that turns a gear, could the same mechanism be used to turn a wheel on the ground with enough torque to actually work? After all, the clockwork is only using simple amplification of mechanical power through the use of leverage. Is that basic mechanical principle enough to turn these two pistons going up and down into a vehicle capable of pulling large artillery on the battlefield? And so, Nick Cugno gave it a go and built the first steam engine small enough to power a vehicle and hooked it to a car that had Big Ben as a transmission. And the transmission was quite cool. Imagine what it would be like to have two chicken feet constantly spinning a ratchet wrench. <laughs> quite frankly, pneumatic wrenches in garages all over the world still use the same basic principle that Cugno used to drive the world's first self-propelled motor vehicle, which he crashed into a wall. And it got put into storage after that. And now it's in a museum in... France, that if I try to pronounce it, my wife will probably hit me with a pillow or worse, uh, so you can look it up. To sum it up, the gun tractor built by Nicholas Cugno was absolutely ahead of its time. The first to successfully build a portable, movable steam engine. The use of high pressure steam 50 years before Richard Trevithick. The first successful transmission. Hey, even if it only was one gear, I mean, hey, he pulled it off. And he did all of this before the United States of America even existed. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History. We'll see you next week. Peace.